I ain't know you were that religious. His response, without a beat, says, I ain't know your dad was the pharmacist. Y'all catch that leg. Y'all catch that leg. Y'all catch that leg. Y'all catch it. As you're going home, you catch it. 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 As we continue, as we continue our theme uh, through um, prayer, we've been really focusing on prayer, and I, and I use the first um, set, set of part of the series is to get our minds focused on uh, communication, using technology, our phones, and all that, and, and giving you the idea of what it means to pray. Now I want to start getting to the actual uh, mechanism or, or the outpour of prayer. Uh, if you have your Bibles this morning, we're going to go into Luke, the 18th chapter. Uh, Jesus, throughout his ministry, really focused a lot on prayer. He demonstrated it, uh, he expressed it, uh, he taught it, and he pushed the disciples. Or not just we always say disciples, but he, wherever he went, he pushed the idea of prayer and the importance of prayer. And a lot of his parables had the meaning of prayer embedded in it. And so uh, this morning, uh, just briefly, uh, this morning, I'm not taking a little bit longer because Cowboys play at 3:25 today, so y'all, y'all ain't got to rush home. Uh, Cowboys, you know, we, we, we. Uh, Luke the 18th chapter and uh, verses one through eight, uh, and you'll find this printed there. And he spake a parable unto them to this end, that man ought always to pray and not faint, saying, There was in a city a judge which feared not God, neither regard man. And there was a widow in that city, and she came unto him, saying, Avenge me of my adversary. And he would not for a while. But after a while he said within himself, Though I fear not God, nor regard a man, yet because this widow troubled me, I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming she worry me. And the Lord said, Hear what the unjust judge said, and he should not give avenge. He and he and shall not God avenge his own uh, elect, which cry day and night unto him, though he bear along with them. I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Ah. Uh, this, this, this sermon puts me back uh, to something uh, a while ago. I used to always have um, this band around um, my wrist. Uh, this is probably 10 years ago. And it, and it simply said, push. P-U-S-H. Pray until something happens. Pray until something happens. Uh, being persistent. And, and when, I, when I think about that, it brought me back to this passage. Uh, this week, Psalms 28 urges us to, to, to just pray and put God in the midst of our prayer. But, but are we really pushing our way through our life? And I said, are we praying until something happens? Or do we wait till something happens and then we pray? Or do we not pray because nothing else is happening in the midst of our life? And, and Jesus says this, and he opens this up as he's teaching uh, this group of people. This just for his disciple, but this was his following for this period of time. He, he says this, that man ought to always pray and not faint. Mm -hmm. and, and I want to I I pause that for a second. Uh, to the not faint part is this, says that um, we should have a routine when we always are praying regardless of what's going on around us. Um, we we want to throw our hands up and give up when things don't go our way. I had this lady come to my office on Wednesday morning, and she came in a frantic. Uh, uh, can I close the door? Let me talk to you. Can I close the door? I was, I was, yeah, come on in. Come on in. And this is, I need you to pray for something. Uh, and then my ears perked up down. I said, okay, what, what is it? Uh, my friend has given up on life. I said, what happened? It's what happened last night. I'm still lost. I, I'm still lost when she said that. I said, well, what happened last night? The election. <laughs> I said, I said, I said, I said, does your friend know God? Yeah, she didn't want to encourage me to come to church. Push. See, 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 before I even get into the text, it didn't say pray as long as things are going well 
in your life. Yeah. And on the flip side, it didn't say pray as long as things are going bad in your life. Mm -hmm. It says man should always pray. Amen. Too often, there's a circumstance that has to happen in the midst of our life before we start praying. Amen. We have to have the right time, the right situation, the right everything before we pray. Mm -hmm. uh, you know how it is. When we, when we get ready to watch our favorite shows, I, I'm going to talk about me and my wife for a second. Y'all don't mind. Uh, when she ready to watch her, she has to be laid in the bed, have a cover on her legs, everything just right for her to watch her show. If you tell her she got to go to the other room and watch the show, she better go to bed. <laughs> she better go to bed. <laughs> go and, but, but, but I will go in the other room and watch the show. Because uh, it doesn't matter. I just, whatever. Just, I can, it's a distraction or anything. But you know how some people just have to have everything just right? Yeah, yeah. We put the same preference on prayer. Well, I don't want to be too tired, so I'm tired. I'll pray in the morning. No good and well. As soon as the alarm clock rings in the morning, you ain't praying. No time soon. You're rushing to get out the house. I mean, you hop in the car, so I pray when I get in the car. Then you turn it on to your, you know, Steve Harvey, uh, uh, whatever you listen in the morning, sports radio. And you forget to pray. You drive all the way to work, and you ain't praying. So I, I pray when I get to the office. You get to the office, and you think that I'm going to have everything ready for me to pray in the office. Then all of a sudden, you get there, your boss calls you as soon as you go to the office. Mm -hmm. Then you say to me for the rest of the day, back and forth, you say, well, I pray when I get home. You get home, mm -hmm. your wife needs your help, your dog needs your help, and your cat needs your help. <laughs> so then you got to do all of that, and you say, I'm going to pray right before I go to bed. And as soon as your head hit the pillow, <laughs> and it starts all over again. <clears throat> he says, man, I want to have a mindset to pray all the time. Again. Pray until something happens, says that I have the right mindset to be who God called me to be. But he uses this parable, and really what I want to pull out this parable real quick is, is what God is speaking about when it comes to prayer. He, he didn't teach, he didn't say, this is how you pray. But here, it, here's what your attitude of prayer should be about. If you notice here, the first thing you see here is that um, the widow comes with a problem. Uh, she has an adversary, and she's struggling with her adversary. Um, and, and she does what, um, at this time, what you normally do. You go before the judge. Now, you got to understand that judges at this time, they all, uh, they all got issues. This dude here, he said, I don't care what people say. I don't care what God says. But if you got money, <laughs> money speaks. Um, judges at this time will take bribes. They will take money, they will take cows, they will take whatever you want to give me, and I'll, I'll rule in your faith. Mm -hmm. He says here that, uh, what I like about the text here is that she never stopped. She never said at home worried about her problem. Right. You know, most of us are worried ourselves to death. We'll sit at home and worry about other stuff, and it just starts to build up. It's almost like water. At first, it's just a little drop here and there. The more you worry, it expands more and more and more. And next thing you know, you got a whole flood on your hand. Now you're, now you're a grand canyon because you let the water of worry ruin your life. Mm -hmm. She was about making sure she got her problem resolved. So the first time I said, don't worry, pray. Right. What represents here is that what she kept doing, she kept going to him. She kept sitting up for prayer. See, what happens is the first time we don't have a response from God, we go on to the next thing. Right. But God, I prayed at 8 o'clock and now... Uh, I ain't hear you, it's 805, so I'm going to ask Luke them to help me out. <laughs> I'm going to have, have, have Roscoe and them help me out. Well, I, I'm going to go over here to Aunt May and see what May got for me. And let's say you know, you've done a whole list. Well, I'm going to go look up and see what Oprah said about this problem. I'm going to go see what Dr. Phil said about this problem. And we start building ourselves up. She never worried. She understood what her source of her problem uh, could resolve from, uh, or be resolved by. And so she kept going to the judge. So much so the judge said, man, this woman is bugging me to death. Mm -hmm. uh, every time I turn around, the, the word here is interesting. When you look it up and you start getting the word, the, the meaning of this word, uh, worry, is that it's almost like trying to put that finger in your eye. How many times a person will put that finger in your eye before you stop them putting that finger in your eye? He was so stressed out about her coming to her. He didn't have no, no regard for anybody else. But something about this lady's persistence. How is God with us? If you don't worry, just keep praying. Mm -hmm. God, I'm not going to worry about it. I'm going to keep turning over to you. I'm going to keep giving it to you. I'm going to keep giving it to you. I'm going to keep on being persistent about what I'm doing. And I'm going to keep on coming to you. And that's, that's actually the next thing you see here. It says she never quit. 
She didn't quit. She was persistent in what she wanted to do. Uh -huh. uh, sometimes your prayer is not answered the first time. Yeah. Sometimes it's not answered the second time. Yeah. Sometimes it's not answered the third time. Paul said I had an issue, a, 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 a issue in my body. And I went to God not once, not twice, but three times I approached the throne of God. See, too often we want an instant God. We want an instant message from God. We, we want to be on Facebook and, and say, hey, you there? And have an instant response to who else is on the other side. Right. And if it's not there, we're going to the next person. But God is not that way. It's persistent that God adheres to. Uh, a, a, a denial, I mean, a delay is not a denial. Yeah, yeah. You, know, you know, you keep praying for that job. I've been praying for that job for, for this long. Well, maybe it takes a little bit longer for you to pray for it. But what I like about it, she didn't go to the judge one time yeah, and stop. Did yeah, um, when we say pray until like something it, happens, yes. you pray until the answer is no, the answer is yes. Uh, you, you don't waver in what you're doing in the midst of God. You don't waver in what, in what people say. I, I, I know sometimes you're praying, and if you let folk know you're praying about something, they become a greater discourage than encourage. Right. So I, if I was you, I'd give up on that. Now, now this is from Christian people telling other Christian people that says, well, why do you keep praying for the same thing? Because I'm going to answer from God. But child, if he ain't answer you by now, he ain't going to answer you. What if the widow in, in, in here has stopped in what she's doing? I'm reminded of widows. When I, when I think about this story, I think about uh, Ruth and Naomi. Uh, what, what, if, what if Ruth would have gave up on Naomi after her, her husband died? But it was for her faith in God that she kept on going wherever Naomi went. What if she had given up by the time she got to uh, uh, back to Jerusalem, to, to Israel, and, and, and she saw that things still weren't adding up like she needed to add up, that now she got to go to work. What, what if she had just said, I'm going back home. I, I, I'm not going to work. I'm going back home. My mom and dad got more stuff than here. But, I'm going. but she stayed persistent in what she was doing. And because she went to the field, God blessed her with more than what she expected when she got out there. And because she kept going where God said go, at the end, God blessed her with more than she ever had. So and so it overflowed to Naomi. That Naomi didn't have to want for nothing else. I'm talking about being persistent in who God is. You keep on pursuing God, and God does something because of your attitude of prayer is better than what it was. Oh see, see, when I look at this, when I look at this, I look at uh, people who look at that circumstance and say, well, God, I'm doing now. Let's go to the election. I'm doing now. You got the guy now. I'm, I'm doing now. I might well cash everything in and go home. I might well just go and move to Canada. I, I, I was talking to a doctor. He said his friend was whining the whole time. He finally asked him, are you going to move to Canada? I'm thinking about setting my company and going to Canada. Why? Because Trump there, you, you don't know the guy I serve? Mm, yeah, yeah. See, 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 we let our circumstances dictate how our prayer life is. All right, all right. Or how God, well, God, you got Trump there. I'm going to stop. Let me put a footnote here. I'm not political, but there were no good candidates. There were no good candidates. And, and so we can't look to man to always resolve our problems. Because as much as we want to vote for Hillary, she messed me up when she said she want, she want to retract the, the, the right for religion. And she want to redefine religion. That, that we want to make sure that the preachers are preaching the right things and not editing people. Can y'all imagine I had to send my stuff up to the Department of Justice to make sure I got the right sermon this morning? Yeah. That everything I write to y'all, I got to go send it up to somebody else and get them to, it's like in high school again. Teacher, can I pass this on to my people? Yeah. So, so, so there was really no good candidate. But the, but the God I serve supersedes all candidates. Amen. I, I got Amen. this idea that Trump can, God can make Trump out to be whoever he wants to make him out to. Trump can wake up in the morning. I, I see the light. Oh, yeah. <laughs> right. I was playing church when I got elected. Now I got to be the church. So right. Right. Yeah. I, I, I had when he quoted some scriptures back six months ago. Now I read the scripture because I need to have help of God in the midst of my life. Yeah. Yeah. See, see, that's the God I serve. Yeah. He, he, he can take whatever we throw to him and make it into something good. Yeah. All right? He says that God can spin in some dirt and make some, make some, take some mess and make a miracle. Yeah. So, so, so when you look at this, what would cause her to uh, want to continue to go that way? Because she believed her problem could be resolved. She understood her problem could be resolved. I, I look at this. And I'm saying, Jesus, what, what are you telling us, Jesus? You're showing us 
a woman going through some difficult times, dealing with a world that does not love God, dealing with a world that even does not even love man. Does that sound familiar to anybody? Yeah. Dealing with folk who don't care about anything, they only care about what's in it for me. Right. Don't care if God is here today or God is going tomorrow. Don't care if you're here today or going tomorrow. Jesus, what are you trying to tell us here? That you, you tell us that we should not faint in our prayer life. Yeah. And, and so you, you show us dealing with some unjust folk, a widow who's not deterred by other people's actions who does not limit her approach to you based upon her current circumstances. I'll get this in a minute. Yeah. That, that when we look at her, she says, I have an adversary. How many of y'all got things going on in your life that's contrary to what you, what you want to have in your life? Yeah. How many of y'all got problems that seem to creep right. up at the last minute as you, oh. as you take everything you got going the right way? Yeah. See, she was a widow. And when she got married, she figured, man, we got it going on. We are just and we moved up now because cause now she got some stuff. She, she got some stuff now. Just when she thought she was making it, yeah, her husband dies. Yeah. And in the midst of him dying, he leaves her with 